Thank you. Hi, I'm Tony, and this is the story of the build of this 31 foot 8 inch J. Benford designed cruising sailboat. From the lofting of the lines to her emerging from the boat shed to receive her keel, masts, and all the other paraphernalia that make up a cruising vessel. Join us on this adventure as we build to patch her and hopefully set off to test her out as a liveaboard cruising vessel. Hi all. Well, no video last week. It's just too busy with other stuff around and about that I got such a little bit done on the boat project that there wasn't really nothing to show you. But uh, here we are, another week later. I've, uh, I've got on a bit now. I'm starting off with the, with the keel. Really been attacking on two fronts this week. The keel finishing, getting towards getting some paint on it really. So I wanted to get some filler around the various joints, some tape over the aft end, and something that a pano from, from Arctic Sea Camel asked about last time was the holes down beside the, the keel bolts, where they come through, what I would do with those, and I, I filled those with epoxy. And to do that, I, I'd rather like to use these little syringes, well, little, big syringes. It's a, what is it, 60 milliliter syringe. Get them from the local pharmacy, only cost a couple of euro. Um, and I think, think they're not even that much. And very good for a controlled epoxy, if it's just pure resin or a thin, thinly thickened <laughs> epoxy. Very, very good for, for getting it in in a very controlled manner. And if you give them a rinse out with a bit of acetone afterwards, you get several uses out of them as well. So this one's been used three times already and it's still good for another go. Really good. So that's what I did there. And then there was a major milestone on the boat. So I put a few little wedges in next to the, the bolts just to make sure they're perfectly square. Um, I've done a fair bit of measuring and they've you know, been very careful. I say wedged them perfectly square, upright, and now I'm going to squirt some epoxy down the holes. And the goal is to, is to fill these holes with, with epoxy.
Hello. Then having got all that fixed in position, so they're all nice and firm now, those bolts, they can't, can't wobble in their keel structure at all. I then wanted to make up a new template to the bolts that are drilled precisely and mark the exact locations of the bolts just to make sure that it lined up with the holes in the bottom of the boat. So here is my template. I don't know if you can see those holes. There we go. <laughs> Some lovely holes through there. But marks the exact positions of the bolts and then I could lay, firstly lay under the boat and get it up in position which is very difficult to show you. In fact I've got a couple of screws through it, screwed up into position. Check the whole positions under the boat and then inside of course in the boat it's very very easy just to lay it on. And the result of that was that I took out some of the holes, made them a little bigger, I took them out to 25 millimeter, one or two of them. That, Four or five of them, I took them out a bit bigger just to make sure that the kill bolts would come up through. Hold it on top of two of them bolts, perhaps. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Hopefully, if we turn that over, we will see. Uh -huh. ah, look at that. Wow. Uh -huh. Cool, that's it. Mm, on there. <laughs> on uh, there. Okay, clever. On there. Two. I've got these solid brass bolts and I must admit they're not the most expensive but they come with screws, brass screws, but they're useless, utterly useless, even with pre-drilling they won't go through a bit of plywood and I do wish, you may tell I'm not happy, I do wish companies would just think about the stuff they're selling this, because screws that won't go through a bit of plywood that's been pre-drilled, they're useless, why bother? Somebody's actually produced them all, all they're fit for is throwing away and replacing with some better screws, aren't they? Stupid. One more. It's quite well. Hmm. 
Now, for weeks between all that keel stuff, I've been working in here in the electrics bay, in the engine room behind me, and running through, I've, I've mentioned it a few times, running through the engine wiring, connecting up the last pieces. I had the, the output wire from the alternator to the charge splitter to get in there. I got that in this week. Uh, one or two other little bits, a new wire that they did that had the right dimensions to the to the glow plugs, so that went in. And then it was time to, to see about getting on starting that engine. Um, and so let's have a look. This is me now, camera in hand, showing you the raw water filter behind that diesel filter with a bit of diesel in it, as you can see. Um, and these, this is a little MD2010 Volvo Penta engine. They're notorious for having very weak lift pumps. So you've got the little lever on the lift pump for bleeding through, but they don't do a right lot. And actually the one on Hazel's, Hazel's got a Yamaha 2GM20, it's also not the best. So the solution I did first of all was to fit one of these squeezy bulbs. We've done the same in Hazel's boat, um, which allows you to pump some diesel through very effectively for bleeding things out. And bleed it through, hooked it up, and you'll see what happens. which it may already still be on, is it? No, I don't know. Okay, turn it on, and then press that little button up for the glow plugs for about 10 seconds. The little toggle switch. Good, now press the start button. Good start for a Oh, it's nearly started, Hazel. It did. Oh, dude. Do you have a bucket in there? I've got a filter, I'm filling up with water again. Oh, I see. Good, let's do it again then. Okay, huh? yeah. Do I have to press the glow thing here again? Yeah, do it, just in case. Ah, oh, of course I have to stop it with the stop lever, which is this one here, isn't it? Yeah, okay, I, I can stop it here. Good, okay. ready. Go for it. I'm sorry. Right. Glow yeah. Is the switch on? Oh, you turn it on. 
turned it off. Yeah, I turned it off. Nice. Oh, that's brilliant. How's that, Hazel? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, well pleased with that. Good. We'll call that a day, I think, now. Well, I've since replaced that squeezy bulb with this little manual pump that I'm showing you with the camera. Um, it's a, it's a push-pull pump. I'm not going to pump it for you because it pressurises the diesel system. But it's very nice, um, mechanical, well, uh, you know, hand pump. And they are wonderful for bleeding through. And hopefully longer lasting than the old squeezy bulb. So that's looking pretty cool, I think. Very tidy diesel system. And I am very pleased. This is the anchor box, huh? Yes. So we'll look, step back. Okay, the anchor chain box, yeah. Yeah. Looks nice, doesn't it? And then if I go up past you, we see the bow roller. Mm. That's all good, all good. And our bow, bow roller mounted up there. So the chain will run down the port side and around into that box. We need a couple of bigger cleats because those cleats aren't big enough, aren't they? Okay, Been good? What are you lot up to? Right, then we put that bit on there. Right there. Good. And then... Right, and now we slide that little plastic cover over that like that. There we go. And if all is well, that should fit. T-shirts now. Yeah, on there. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got to do spot the alternator up. Oh, oh. Really sticks out. Yes, it's a lot cleaner than yeah. the rest of the boat, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to try this continental belt that we live in hope will actually fit. Let's find 
out what happens when we do this. Goes and, oh, see, 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 see. Right, okay, well, that continental boat belt does not fit. All right, let's have a look. All oh. fixed down. We've been putting that on there with a loop to fix the bitter end of the chain, to. Catch on there, obviously. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it blends in well, I it's think. It's amazing how close that colour is to that colour, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's basically the same. Yeah. More about luck and judgement. <laughs> yeah, right. And, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this week. Working on two boats. We'll carry on for another couple of weeks working on two boats. The Hazel hopes to set off sailing for a summer cruising in well, mid-June, shall we say, mid to late June. So, still got a few bits to do there. Um, just wanted to give a shout out to four, one of our patrons, uh, Chris, he's, he's got a, a Coromel 26, Junk Rig Coromel 26, that uh, is currently in Northern Holland and uh, he wants to sell it, so it's up for sale. I'll post a, a link in the description, maybe a picture in a minute. Um, it's a boat, he, you know, I know of the boat, I, I must admit I've never seen it, but I know that he sailed it from um, Isle of Wight area uh, all the way to Northern Holland, so it's clearly very capable. And uh, I also know that he's, he's, a, you know, he's the sort of guy that maintains a boat very well, so it will be a looked after boat. If anybody's interested in a, in a 26 foot junk rigger, it's one up for grabs. And there we go, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. All that YouTube stuff. See you soon. Bye.